ऊपर से भारत कैसा दिखता है आपको इन इंडिया वी हैव इक्वल राइट फॉर एवरी वन एंड वी डोंट लुक टूवर्ड्स कम्युनिटीज विद सस्पेशन on after churches and uh, prayer meets the hindutva hooligans have reached out to the corridors of schools in karnataka hame lag hi nahi raha tha ki hum log india mein reh rahe hain hame aise lag raha tha ki jaise pata nahi hum kahin aur kisi mulk mein hain hum log to india now where there has been a rise in the number of attacks on churches and christian gatherings that is carried inside uh, Persecution relief has recorded a rapid increase in the number of hate crimes including physical and verbal abuse and the burning of bibles. And still my prayer and desire is that these people who took my husband's life will be touched by that same love so that they will never do this to any other person. Eva Barilva they asked mockingly as they thrashed the young pastor on Easter day last April in Belgaum district of Karnataka they thrashed his wife forced them to perform hindu rituals and chanted jai shri ram the incident that i just narrated is one of the many instances of violent persecution that are increasing day by day against christians in india churches vandalized believers thrashed women and children assaulted pastors and evangelists killed well these have become normal and regular headlines as we scroll across uh, daily on our social media platforms india is ranked 10th on watchdog open doors uh, list of countries most difficult to practice christianity and if you were to look at this list you would uh, see countries such as iran pakistan and afghanistan just above our country now some of you people sitting in their urban cushions out of touch with what we call the real india would ask show me brother where is this persecution happening aren't you tarnishing the image of our beautiful land by you know spreading fake news and fake propaganda well absolutely not numbers don't lie according to reports hate crimes against christians including instances of murder arson and rape has risen by 40% in the first half of 2020 As of 2020, uh, UCIRF has placed India as tier one in minority persecution, along with countries such as China, North Korea, Saudi Arabia, and Pakistan. This is to say that India is designated as a country with particular concern. Around 486 incidents of attack against Christians uh, were recorded in 2021. Now, this is a 75 percent increase from 2020. and well these are from the data that we are speaking now you must also understand that many of these attacks go unreported and sometimes the police even side with the attackers there were at least three attacks uh, last christmas where the police failed to act against the attackers now many states with karnataka being the recent one has passed the anti conversion bill last december which was signed by the karnataka governor tawarchand gilohot was was facing massive opposition from the christian community and its leaders and is set to be implemented in karnataka karnataka becomes the ninth state to implement such a law with states such as uttar pradesh madhya pradesh gujarat having already implemented uh, such laws earlier and ironically this law is called as the karnataka freedom of religion bill few days ago the union minister giriraj singh as called for nation wide anti conversion bills to be legislated over the last couple of years the word conversion has become a taboo term with such a negative connotation that it stands for everything that is based on conspiracy fraud anti india and what not from maligning the christian missionaries who selfless sacrifices have uh, substantially contributed to building modern india and spreading nonsense uh, that are sometimes so laughable and ridiculous you know things like the vatican conspiracy missionaries will pay you money to get converted look i don't know if this is true but if any missionary is giving money to get converted please let me know we have been christians for a while now for some generation and i really need to be compensated 
the hindutva propaganda has succeeded in creating a false narrative against christians and spreading up hatred in this country let us start with a simple question what is conversion in simple terms it is merely changing one's beliefs to adapt new ones it's an essential component of human reason and truth seeking we persuade and are persuaded all the time moreover conversions are not merely a religious phenomena back in 2014 india underwent a massive political conversion which was led by the charisma and leadership of our now prime minister narendra modi what actually happened was that a large majority of people converted from one set of political beliefs to another set of political beliefs similarly one could stop supporting barcelona and start supporting real madrid and i could preach my heart out claiming that ronaldo is a far better player than messi and those are my personal convictions and if you think messi is better you be ready for a persuasive pushback from me well you are not triggered by any of these examples right then what's so unusual in applying that same rule of freedom and expression to religion as well you know and most of us would agree that these are the most consequential and quintessential set of beliefs that a person can hold and cherish in a secular country like india people must have the right to practice and preach one's faith or belief without any fear in his book india as a secular state donald eugene smith defines religious freedom as freedom of religion means that an individual is free to consider and to discuss with others the relative claims of differing religions and to come to his decision without any interference from the state he is free to reject them all if he decides to embrace one religion he has freedom to follow its teachings practice in its worship and other activities propagate its doctrines and hold office in its organization if the individual later decides to renounce his religion or to embrace another he is at the liberty to do so now article 25 of the constitution guarantees the freedom of conscience the freedom to profess practice and propagate religion to all its citizen an important word to be understood is the freedom of conscience freedom of conscience is the absolute right of an individual and the state has no authority whatsoever to interfere with it James Madison, America's founding father and its fourth president who was instrumental in framing this amendment in the American Constitution, he writes, "The religion then of every man must be left to the conviction and conscience of every man, and it is the right of every man to exercise it as these may dictate. This right is in nature an unalienable right." The question of religious conversion was discussed in the Constituent Assembly at length. and this video does not have the scope to go into the details of those debate but if you want are interested you can read this article above i will leave a link to that in the description box as well but reading those debates it is quite clear that the framers of the constitution clearly understood uh, that freedom of conscience is fundamental and integral and barring force and undue influence uh, and violence there should be not an issue uh, with religious conversion Now with this being said let us come to the most serious issue of propagating one's faith the far right and its supporters would often claim that it is the abrahamic religions that seek to convert now there is some truth to uh, this claim and you will hear most hindu say things like hinduism is very tolerant uh, all religions are equally true and hinduism never seeks to convert and as i said there are modern champions of this faith like uh, mk gandhi and s radhakrishnan who come from this school of thought now even though this is true to some extent if you take a closer look you will see that hinduism although not aggressive as uh, islam and christianity still seeks to proselytize in fact hinduism and buddhism spread across asia via conversion inscription found in borneo an island in pacific ocean testify the performance of vedic sacrifices uh, by brahmans at the behest of the local chiefs large temples de- dedicated to vishnu or shiva were built during the ancient kamar empire even today people in bali still follow a form of hinduism buddhism as a religion spread across asia through conversion in that the ashoka chakra which we are quite familiar with because it is included in our national flag as a symbol of progressiveness of our country is traditionally a symbol of teachings of gautama buddha and when the mauryan emperor ashoka converted to buddhism 
he built two paths and temples and propagated his faith. The scenes that you just witnessed are from a democratic and free country where Christianity is still the major religion. In fact, there are over 450 Hindu temples in the US alone and countless number across Europe and other Western countries. Hindu groups travel globally engaging uh, in speaking conferences, preaching and teaching the Hindu way of life to Westerners and many of whom are attracted to the Hindu philosophy as well. We have seen numerous members of the Hare Krishna chanting and singing along the streets of New York and London and that's exactly how it should be and why should anyone be offended. We could also talk about the vast majority of Dalits in our country, roughly over 20 million. A large part of them are counted as Hindus. Same goes with the Adivasi community. In some sense, the right-wing proponents often stretch the boundaries of uh, their religion to include uh, Dalits and Adivasis to their fold. When the Adivasis themselves never recognized as Hindus, how do you guys perform Garvapsi to them? To which Gar are they returning? Isn't this some sort of conversion as well? The all-encompassing definition of Hinduism has swallowed different religions as well, like Buddhism, Jainism and Sikhism to its fold. Well, aren't these all, uh, you know, examples of rigorous religious expansion? And this we can term as religious conversion. Now, to term as coercive and fraudulent is something that we can ponder upon. Anyway, getting back to the initial question, one must understand that conversion is not something that is to be frowned upon. It is a matter of personal choice and it is not up to the state or society or even one's per, uh, you know, family to decide the individual choices of a person. Can you name a free and democratic country that seeks to control uh, freedom of speech and to criminalize conversion? There aren't any, right? But I can give you a list of autocratic countries uh, like China, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Yemen and Sudan and Pakistan that do this. Is India also taking that path? Now let us address the elephant in the room, the myth of paid conversion. You have often seen such baseless claims peddled across social media that missionaries give money and other material benefits to convert the lower caste and the poor from rural areas. If you are watching this, and you really think that there is any merit to this claim, please pause and reflect. Why would a missionary pay you money to convert to his faith? Is there any verse in the Bible that even remotely suggests this or encourages us to pay and convert? What will the missionary get if he pays someone to follow his faith? He only loses and he gains nothing. Because the Bible is abundantly clear that the act of becoming a Christian is birthed out of preaching the gospel and a genuine response to repenting of one's sins and following. Money or material gain is nowhere a part of this process. Therefore, the apt word uh, would be not uh, dharm parivartan but man parivartan. But then why has this myth gained currency on social media? It is because the fake news peddlers have been trying to paint Christian social action and charity as instruments for conversion. Of course, even through the works of charity, if we end up prompting a poor and outcast person to accept Jesus and follow the gospel, then who are you to uh, question it anyway? But to allege that the purpose of Christian social action is conversion is beyond ridiculous and naive. First of all, by making such an allegation, you are tacitly acknowledging that you are part of a system that has historically suppressed a certain group of people based on the evil caste system and hence you are referring to them as lower caste or you know backward caste. Secondly, you are also conceding that these people are really so dumb and desperate that they are willing to exchange their faith for a few hundreds of rupees. All these allegations spring from caste hegemony. Although many upper caste have indeed converted to Christianity, the problem that is brought up is that missionaries are paying the lower caste people to convert to Christianity. And what do you think? The Dalits are not intellectually capable as you are. Uh, every citizen of this country has the freedom and liberty equally to be true to his conscience and follow whatever religion he wishes to. So the allegation itself is therefore deeply rooted in the evil Indian caste system where the Dalits cannot decide for themselves. 
in the past the upper caste decided what the Dalit should eat, what she should drink and in the current time the upper caste tries to display the same sense of arrogance by deciding the Dalit's religion. If you really think the ones you call as lower caste have some lesser form of intellect and are incapable of choosing what's the best for them, please wake up from that oppressive Brahmanical era that you are still living in. Now for the folks who bring up the charge of allurement, let me ask you this. Why is it that when people leave their religion of birth for a better job or a better lifestyle and good future, considered to be coercive and fraudulent, but when people leave their country behind for a better job uh, and future and better lifestyle, why is it considered as progress? And what is this allurement that you are talking about? Oh, maybe some of these Dalits do not deserve a good job and good, uh, you know, good future and they, you wish them to live in poverty and treat them as you treated them for 1500 years. Christianity and Christian missionaries do not promise luxury. By following Jesus, you are not guaranteed a good job or any other materialistic gain. But one thing is true, places where Christianity has gone, it has transformed the very social fabric and India is no different. The video has limited scope to explore the contributions of Christian missionaries to our country, to the field of education and health, but we will cover that in some future video. The charges brought up by the right-wing wounds and their fanatic supporters are therefore unsubstantiated, fraud, repugnant, aimed at destroying the social fabric of the society. For a more detailed critique on the myth of paid conversion, uh, you can check out my article. I will leave a link to that in the description box. Riding on false propaganda, attacks against Christians and other religious minorities have intensified during the last couple of years. Various state missionaries have either passed or are in the process of considering similar bills that were passed uh, in Karnataka Legislative Assembly last December. Such bills and laws empower the attacker and give them the license to loot, threaten, frighten, assault, molest and rape innocent law-abiding citizens of this free country. Their only fault is following a teachings of a humble and meek first century Galilean who taught to love the unlovable, to forgive the unforgivable. No matter how much you resist, we will not react with violence. Right from the beginning, Christianity has endured severe persecution from the, first from the Jewish authorities and then from the Roman Empire. Throughout church's history, countless Christians have been martyred and numerous Christians undergo severe persecution in many countries across the globe and sadly, India is also among them. With increasing attacks against Christians, the state and center have been watching for such bills are empowering and enabling them to push fake propaganda and thereby persecute believers and missionaries and also block funds and resources of Christian organizations. Borrowing from the words of the opposition, let me tell you such bills are, and laws and measures are anti-people, inhumane, anti-constitutional, anti-poor and draconian. This is Ashish John for the Carpenter's Guest.